When I first bought my Porsche Macan 15 months ago, I really didn't have any intention of starting a YouTube channel. In that time, I bought and sold a car, I bought another one, and now this happened. I can't really explain it. One thing led to another, and now here we are making incredibly stupid financial decisions. Starting a YouTube channel means you as the viewer get to enjoy all of the idiotic things I'm doing with my money and cars. Buying cars is pretty much the worst financial decision you can make. They're depreciating assets, they cost thousands of dollars to maintain. You should do just about anything else with your money other than spend it on cars. Save it, stash it away. Whatever you do, don't do what I'm doing, which is lighting your cash on fire. I've allowed my love of cars to completely take over my life. I've lost thousands of dollars on the M5. I bought this incredibly crazy 1000 horsepower Tesla Model S Plaid, all for the sake of the YouTube channel, if I only prevented myself from doing that. But enough about that, I'll try not to dwell over that too much. I thought having a thousand horsepower electric machine would be enough, but guess what? It turned out it's not. The problem with the Tesla is it's kind of a one trick pony. You stomp the accelerator pedal, it goes really, really fast. It's mind blowingly fast, but that's about it. As a driver, you're doing so little. You're barely even braking because it uses regenerative braking. As cool as the Tesla is, I still need my combustion engine car because I'm stuck in the old ages. If the Tesla is the Ford Model T, I still need my faster horse, which is a six-speed manual transmission, gas-guzzling vehicle. Wherever Tesla takes us and however disruption the automotive industry goes through, I'll be one of the few that clings on to cars like this for dear life. So as a car person, you're missing out on so much of the driving experience. And over the last few months, I really started to miss not having a combustion engine vehicle. I missed having no exhaust note, and most of all, I really missed having a stick shift. The six-speed V8 in my E39 M5 was so much fun, and I realized that I really need a manual transmission car. And so the search began for finding a stick shift fun car. It's not like I had my eyes on the 911, I was looking through a bunch of different things. Every day I was looking for anything I could find with a six speed that would be fun, like a Ford GT350, a Corvette Z06. I even looked at used R8s and Nissan GTRs. A used AMG GT Coupe was also on my list. They're such beautiful cars, even though they don't have a stick shift. So after weeks and months of searching, I finally settled on a used 911 and decided just to stick with it. I don't know why I was treating it like a life or death decision because this is not like the car I'm gonna keep forever. This is one of many that I hope to own. 911s have kind of a mystique about them. They're the quintessential sports car, not quite like a Lambo or a Ferrari, but also a step above a BMW or a Mercedes. I've never owned a Porsche 911, so I feverishly started searching all of the different variants of them. Porsche 911s are so expensive that I really had to think about what kind I wanted. A brand new one is definitely out of the question, but even used command high prices in the used market. All the different Porsche 911 models have a lot of nines and all kinds of digits in them. An early 2000 996 is something that's much more reasonably priced but learning from my E39 M5 experience, I really didn't want to get something that old. The 996ers are actually really great cars, but they just require a lot more care and upfront maintenance, and I just didn't want to spend the time to do that. I thought I was going to get a 997 because it's a little bit newer, but still pretty old, built from 2005 to 2011. I was looking at the newer 997, the 997.2 that was built in the late 2000s, but the prices of those were so expensive that they were basically as much as the next generation, which you're looking at, the 991, 911, that's a lot of nines and ones that started in 2012. Another reason why I wanted to go with the 991 is because of the creature comforts. It is a vastly more updated interior than the 997. And so with the 991s, I started looking for the stick shift because ultimately to me, that makes all the difference. You wouldn't believe how hard it was to find a 991 with this. And even with manual transmission 997s, these kinds of cars are in such high demand that not only do they have a premium on it, you'd be lucky just to be able to buy those. 
I absolutely couldn't believe the insane demand for these. I looked at at least four of them and within days they were gone. I came across one at a local dealer in Austin. I checked it out on Friday and by Monday it was gone. And guess what? It had an accident in its record and it sold for sticker price. I don't think even the manual 997s have that high of a demand as the 991 stick shift. I've never seen anything like this. I just didn't realize how much in demand these cars are. That actually makes me feel better about spending money on a car because I know that this thing will hold its value. And so hopefully I don't lose too much while I own this one. As dumb as it is to spend money on cars, I want to make the decision a little less dumb by picking cars that hold its value. And if there was ever a car that hopefully won't depreciate like crazy, you're looking at it. A seven speed 991-911. So you might be wondering how I ended up buying this one. This 991 came up for sale and within a couple days I pulled the trigger and I found out from the dealer that at the same time there were three other people that were also wanting to buy it. I ended up doing something with this car that I've never done in my life, which is buy this car sight unseen, never having driven it from North Carolina and had it shipped over to me. This was not a Carvana purchase, so you know that I was taking a big risk and I had my fingers crossed that I didn't end up with a pile of garbage. I'm happy to report that the car did show up as advertised, 59,000 miles on the clock, seven speed transmission, everything appears to be working okay but only time will tell because I've only had the car for a few days now. In a future video, I'll talk about what it was like to buy a car sight unseen from a different state, not really knowing what you're getting into when talking to another dealer. And I have to say it's scary and nerve wracking, but turned out okay in my case. Just like my Porsche Macan, I would have loved to have gotten a certified pre-owned warranty on this, but that would have made this car way too expensive. Instead, I'm just assuming I'm gonna have to pay some amount of money out of pocket for repairs and regular maintenance, and let's just hope that it doesn't amount to the premium that a CPO warranty would have cost me. I've only owned this car a few days, but I can already tell you that driving a 911 is not like any other car. These are true sports car and the feel is totally different from anything else that you could drive. I'm loving the standard transmission on this, even though I don't know what to do with that seventh gear. I don't think it really needs it. I think I'm gonna absolutely enjoy owning this car and so expect a lot more videos of this 911. Until next time, I'm gonna leave you with a cold start.